Hey guys, what's going on? John Massey with Coastal Crypto Mining, and uh, I'm back with part two to our E9 Pro series. Part one was a short. If you haven't checked it out yet, you can really get a grasp on the size of the E9 Pro, how much it weighs during an unboxing. Uh, this E9 Pro is a loaner. Uh, this actually belongs to a customer of ours who is nice enough to lend it to us for a box opening and a review. And uh, I'm glad he did because we've uh, run into some problems with this E9 Pro. Um, and uh, I'm going to share them with you. They're not bad machines by any means, but there are some hiccups that you need to know about if you're going to mine, say, ETC with this machine. So let's dive into it. Let's take a look at the web interface for the E9 Pro. Take a look at some of the hash boards because there are only two hash boards on this machine and uh, see what kind of uh, trouble we can get into. Let's dive into it. All right, guys, so here is the inside workings of the Antminer E9 Pro available at CoastalCryptoMining.com. We also have the E9 available as well, uh, but um, we're getting some kickback from our supplier on the E9 Pros just because we're seeing similar issues with this machine that we saw with the L7s. And what I'm talking about is the chip lottery. This machine is all over the place when it comes to stability or uh, volatile hashing capabilities. Uh, I'm going to chalk it up to chips because what we're getting back from our supplier are different variants in total hashing power of these machines. And if you're watching the numbers above my head a little bit, you'll see that they're fluctuating as we're talking. Uh, we're seeing kickback from our suppliers in terms of about four different hash variants when it comes to the E9 Pro. This is the higher hashing version of the E9 Pro. This is the first release of this machine. Uh, we got this as soon as they became available, um, but we're seeing staggering information and variants in hashing rates. Average hash rate right now, this machine is supposed to be 3.8, 3.9 in that range. Uh, we're getting kickback from the supplier saying he, he's got models that are 3.5, 3.4, you know, 28 to 30. You know, these machines are, are, are all over the place in terms of stability for hashing uh, rates. But they are hashing, and we're not seeing any pool rejections. So that is a good sign to me. That shows me that we're finally we're able to get a pool connection after struggling to get a pool connection for ETC, and we're not getting any rejections from the pool. Now, again, there are only two hash boards on this machine. I'm not tearing this one apart. Sorry, guys. I know you like it when I tear machines apart. Um, hopefully, we'll get one in soon for ourselves so we can tear it apart and show you what these um, hash boards look like. They are quite large. They are very similar to the E9 uh, hash boards, if you saw that video. Um, but um, let's let's take a look here. Let me scroll down so you can kind of get a better glimpse of what we're seeing for fan speed and for uh, board consistencies, internal temperatures, outboard temperatures, running fairly cool in terms of ASICs. Uh, the S19J Pros run a little bit hot. We've seen other ASICs run pretty hot. This one seems to be fairly cool across the board. Fan speeds are fairly low, and it's for the size of the machine fairly quiet as well. So we are seeing that uh, the frequency is locked in. We haven't found a way to adjust the frequency per the per board. We hope that something that will come down the line with, say, a third-party firmware from Hive, um, if you guys aren't aware of it, Shill Alert, we did uh, partner directly with Hive, and they have put together firmware directly for us to kind of distribute to whoever wants it. It is free on our website. Uh, I'll put a link in the description down below. We are limited to the firmware right now as more is being put together for us. Um, it is a partnership program that we have with Hive. So yes, we do get a small kickback, but it's not um, anything substantial. It's just more or less, we like the Hive firmware. We like what it's doing. And uh, we like the fact that it gets away from, sorry, it's on this side, this GUI that Antminer has kind of adopted. Uh, but 
enough with the shale. Let's get back into the E9 Pro. Let's take a look at the pool and see what kind of hash rates we see over there in comparison to this uh, web interface for it. Now, we were only able to connect to Poolin um, after trying F2 Pool and a couple of others. And you'll notice that we're only mining ETC. We are not mining ETC and Zill or dual mining. Uh, Mark does have a video on how to set up dual mining for the iPolos. If you want to check that out, I'll put a link in the description down below or put it over my head someplace. I'll figure it out. Uh, but I'll put it someplace. Or if you can't find it, ask in the comments down below and I'll pin it there as well. Uh, but you can see even the hash rate here is all over the place. We're seeing real-time hash rate of 4.5 and 3.97 for the 24 hours. Go back to the web interface. Now it's saying 3.4 real time and 3.9 is the average. So, oh, just jumped up to 4.5. So you can see that the hash rates are all over the place for this machine. Um, another issue that we had that was kind of surprising to us because this machine is marketed by Bitmain at this point in time to mine ETC, not ETH anymore. Originally, the E9s were developed to mine ETH. ETH is no longer a mineable coin in the sense that you can mine it with an ASIC or GPU. So firmware was developed to mine ETC. These, uh, these machines have been coming to us in box, new in box, but only available or only set up to mine Ethereum, which is no longer mineable. So trying to run this thing right out of the box was a little bit of a headache because we assumed that it was already got the latest firmware on it, and we were able to mine right out of the box ETC and Zill. Now, again, we haven't been able to dual mine on it yet. Mark is still trying to figure it out, but again, this machine is a loaner, and we have to get it back to the customer. He's dying to plug it in himself, but at least he won't have to go through the headache that we had to go through to figure out what was going on. So what we ended up doing, and it was really a fairly simple solution, um, at, at the end of the day, it really wasn't that big of a deal, but we ended up having to go to Bitmain's website, uh, shop.bitmain.com forward slash support forward slash download. I'll put a link in the description below directly for the E9 Pro firmware, and you're going to want to download and probably flash or install the ETC version of this firmware. Now, for some reason, it had the ETH and uh, ETH F released firmware on it. I don't know why. Um, again, there's not a whole lot of difference between the E9 Pro and the E9 original, except for firmware and maybe some chip optimization. So that's, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that these control boards are the same on the E9 Pro and the E9. Again, we haven't taken the E9 Pro apart yet. I know you guys love when I tear down machines. Um, but again, this isn't my machine. It's still under warranty from a cust for a customer, so we don't want to tear into it. But what I'm what I'm pondering here, what I'm suggesting is that Bitmain, to save cost, used control boards that were originally flashed for the E9 when it was built to mine Ethereum and just dumped it in these E9 Pros and didn't reflash or update the firmware. So if you have an ETC, pro, sorry, if you have an E9 Pro that's not mining ETC and you're having con trouble connecting to the pools, check the firmware. The firmware may be the biggest and simplest issue that you are having with these machines. Um, I hope as time goes on and new firmware is developed for the E9 Pro, like we've seen the S19Js and the S19, new firmware has come out, even from Bitmain, to make their equipment more stable we'll see the same kind of thing go off of the E9 Pro in the E9. We know that Hive is already working on firmware for the L7 and for the E9s and the E9 Pro, so hopefully we'll see that sooner rather than later so we can kind of dive into what's going on with these machines and see more consistent uh, readings and hash rates. Now, real quick before I let you go, just what I'm talking about, again, in you know, how, how unstable the hash rate really is. We're not seeing consistent results. You can see that each individual, each individual boards, that, that was a mouthful, 
they're they're not in sync. They're not tied to each other. Usually, you'll see an ASIC where they're, you know, two to three percent of 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 each other. The boards are at least. These ones are way out, you know, of of spec in terms of being synced. And uh, I think the issue is because Bitmain is locking in the frequency on these boards to 500 uh, megahertz with a third-party firmware or potentially Bitmain's own firmware. We'll see a fluctuating frequency for these boards to really, you know, hone in these chips and really dial them in a little bit like we saw with some of the auto-tune features from Hive. Um, I hope that comes down or comes out sooner rather than later just because this machine is a powerhouse. It is a pretty big machine. It is quiet. Uh, you know, my, nice little space heater in the corner because it is quiet. You could run it in your office. Uh, I mean, the fans are spinning, spinning fairly slowly compared to, say, the 6,000 RPM fan that we saw like on an L l3 or an s9 or an s17 or even the s19s um, so if you have any questions about these machines or about any machine please reach out to us comment down below we are available on discord we are available on twitter um, we have a direct form and messenger on our website if you don't have discord if you don't like to use twitter we make it available to contact us directly on our website as well uh, we have a number of new stuff coming out for our website. You know, the firmware being one of them, new products being available. We're trying to do more group buys because that seems to be the best way to get the lowest price for you guys. Um, if you don't see something you like, let us know. We will try to help you find it. Or if you're just looking for help uh, setting something up, even if you bought it from us or not, we want to help you guys. We're all about community. We're all about growing together and, uh, you know, cryptocurrency, you know, moving forward into the future. Again, guys, thank you so much for checking out the video. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and make sure you hit that notification bell because Mark and I go live at random times. And uh, they're, you know, long, information-packed live streams. We try to break them down for you guys in bite-sized chunks after the live stream, but the live stream is probably the best place to get some of your questions answered. So until then, guys, take it easy. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have questions, let me know. Uh, until next time, you guys are awesome. Later.